Hello everyone, we shall discuss few cases of shoulder instability. Before I show you any case, I just want to discuss the mechanism how these injuries are happening. We know the shoulder joint is one of the most mobile joints in the human body and the point to remember here is the mobility is at the cost of joint stability. So this is normal Grignard capsule and this is the humerus head both together form the ball and socket joint this is the normal arrangement and this diagram represents the anterior dislocation of the shoulder precisely anterior inferior dislocation of the shoulder so consider this as a clock this area is 12 o'clock position this area anteriorly it is 3 o'clock position this area is 6 o'clock position this area is 9 o'clock position so the area between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock is the area which is most commonly affected because of anterior inferior dislocation of the shoulder so the labrum here in this 3 to 6 o'clock position is most commonly affected that is anterior inferior glenoid labrum now coming back to this part first we'll discuss about the Bancart lesion what exactly happening in Bancart lesion is there is detachment of the anterior inferior labrum along with the tear in the periosteum this is the periosteum so there is a tear in the periosteum so together with the anterior inferior avulsion of the glenoid labrum and periosteal tear forms Bancart lesion and the posterior labrum appears normal then what is osseous Bancart? osseous Bancart is nothing but when you see detachment of anterior inferior labrum along with the bony glenoid rim both the things together with the periosteal breach all three together form the osseous Bancart lesion so what forms the Perthes lesion? When you see the detached anterior inferior labrum along with the stripped periosteum but you can see the intact attachment of the periosteum to its mother bone this forms the Perthes lesion. So when you see the break in the periosteum it is Bancart. When there is no break in the periosteum then it forms the Perthes lesion. So it's a variant of Bancart lesion. Coming to the Alpsa, Alpsa is nothing but anterior labral periosteal sleeve avulsion where you can see the medially displaced inferior glenoid labrum in between the periosteum and the bone. GLAD is nothing but glenolabral articular disruption where you can see the tear of anterior inferior glenoid labrum along with the cartilage. So here the cartilage is intact. But here you can see the cartilage is also torn out. This is liver's band cart lesion. You can see it in posterior dislocation of shoulder. You can see the detached posterior inferior glenoid labrum along with tear of the periosteum. So it is exactly like band cart lesion but it is present in the posterior inferior aspect rather than anterior inferior aspect. This is the MRI of 35 year old male patient presented with chief complaint of shoulder pain and instability. This is a T2 weighted fat suppression image showing the detached anterior inferior glenoid labrum which is dark signal because of fibrous and cartilaginous component and you can see the periosteum here which is stripped or avulsed and the attachment of the periosteum to the underlying scapular bone which is intact and this is a merge sequence where you can see the detached anterior inferior glenoid labrum clearly and this is the avulsed or stripped periosteum which is still attached to the mother bone so with these features a diagnosis of Perthes lesion is made out this is a 35 year old male patient with history of repeated shoulder dislocations MRI proton density fat suppression image demonstrating normal posterior inferior glenoid labrum and the deficient anterior inferior glenoid labrum this forms the Bancart lesion this is a merge sequence where you can see the defect in the anterior inferior glenoid labrum very clearly and there is a trough like defect in the posterior superior humeral head suggestive of hill sacs lesion so this case has absent anterior inferior glenoid labrum suggestive of Bancart's lesion and defect in posterior superior humeral head suggestive of hill sacs lesion hill sacs lesion should be looked at the level of coracoid process because at too lower level anatomical notch on the head of the humerus may simulate a hill sacs lesion this is another case where the patient presented with acute shoulder dislocation an MRI demonstrate the posterior dislocation of the shoulder with humeral head displaced posteriorly the anterior glenoid labrum appears normal and the posterior glenoid labrum shows increased signal intensity with deficit such as to have reverse Bancart lesion and this impaction fracture in the anterior medial aspect of the humerus is suggestive to of reverse hill sac lesion which is seen in posterior dislocation of shoulder reverse hill sac lesion is also called as McLaughlin lesion 
CT image of the same patient demonstrates the posterior dislocation of the shoulder along with the bony defect in the anterior medial aspect of the humeral head which is getting engaged with the glenoid and this is called engaging type of reverse heel sac lesion. In summary, anterior dislocation of the shoulder is most common type of shoulder dislocation. Perthes lesions are difficult to detect both on CT and arthroscopy because the turn labrum may remain in normal position. Imaging with abduction and external rotation position increases the detection rates of these lesions. And last important thing, what a radiologist should give in their report is the amount of glenoid bone loss. This we calculate by using the method called best fit circle method, where the percentage of bone loss of the glenoid is mentioned and the surgeon plans repair accordingly by using coracoid graft and repairing the glenoid bone. Thank you. Hope this video was useful to you.